Hello Reactor Enthusiasts! In this video we'll try to do the quickest possible Reactor Startup after a hot shutdown. If you watch my previous videos this is somehow similar to the one of boron decrease. In that one I tried to decrease the boron concentration at the minimum possible value and see if the reactor could security could be compromised by this. In this I will also decrease boron concentration a lot but the purpose is to reach uh, nominal power in the shortest possible time. Let's open the simulation, hot shut down and start up without failures at the beginning of cycle. Okay, this is the control panel. Doing simulations for this video, I realized about, about something. First of all, I look at the reactivity increase in a normal withdrawal sequence. So starting from the group 1 to the group 10, I watch at what was the reactivity increase in each group withdrawal. And I realized that some groups have a higher effect on reactivity increase than others. And these groups are the number 3, number 4, and higher than these previous two, number 6. All the other groups have a much less impact on reactivity. Then I realized, because I tried to do an, another procedure in which I don't start by the group 1, 2, 3, etc. But I just use groups 3, 4 and 6. And then I realized that the reactivity increase, it's not linear. It changes depending on the position of the other group. So if you don't follow the normal sequence, the different groups will have different reactivity increase. For instance, uh, let's start the simulation and this will be much more clear. So now a scrum will be triggered. There it goes. I disconnect this button. We go to the error tab and we will disconnect some security systems like the period below 20 seconds and the period below 10 seconds. So we can really go up to power fast without creating a scrum. I will also disconnect the pressure in the reactor below 140, otherwise we need to wait now several minutes more for the water pressures to equalize. So I remove the blinking, I deblock the, the scrum and we can already go to the control panel. I will disconnect the boron exchange 1C model and select auto. This is to reduce boron concentration but I will stop it before the values I used in the previous video of boron concentration because I will now start to withdraw rods as quickly as possible to get up to nominal power in the minimum possible time. So according to my estimations I will stop boron concentration when reactivity is zero so boron concentration will be around five more or less five. So now I will start withdrawing group five and I will withdraw this group up to 50%. Why group 5? Because before I just mentioned groups 3, 4 and 6 are the ones that in the main sequence produce the higher reactivity increase. Well, this is in the main sequence, but in the configuration that I designed for this simulation, that's not the case. As you can already start to see in the colorful map of the foil assemblies, we have a very dark foil assemblies with a, with a dark blue color which almost create a barrier between the two outer foil assembly rows and the inner core with a hexagonal shape that is created inside this barrier. So what we will do is just withdraw rods that are within this uh, barrier. And as we see the rods of group 5 are highlighted in, in green now. So it's the central, very central one of the reactor and 3-1 at the up uh, 60 degrees and etc. Hey, sorry, not 60 degrees, it's uh, 120 degrees, etc. When this reaches 50%, I will continue with group 6, which is also totally enclosed inside this hexagon, and then we'll end up adjusting power with group 10, which is, which is also luckily inside this rect uh, hexagon, so we can use automatic control with group 10 with this configuration. Okay, we are 50%, I continue with group 6, and we have reactivity still negative, so boron, shim is still reducing boron.
we see that the rods belonging to group 6 are just highlighted in yellow. They form an hexagon in a very inner position of the reactor, plus three rods in the outer sides of, of this inner hexagon that we created. We see the pillar going down to 10, to 8, to 7, to 6, to 5, but don't worry because we disconnected the security concerning this. And we see the neutron generation now is at 0.6 of nominal. When it goes above 1 or 2, I will go to connect the turbine. Okay, let's go now to connect the turbine. Auto. It's not being connected. Does it need more power? Does it need 5% of neutrons? No, I'm not sure. And reactive is just got positive, so let's disconnect boron shim. And we are in a boron concentration of 6. It's much higher than the 5 I got in the previous simulations. So probably we need to withdraw a bit more the group 5 to compensate for this loss of reactivity. So we are at power of 5. Let's go to connect the turbine. Okay, it's connected. It just connected. Right? Is it? Yes. And we continue with rowing group 6. We had 4 minutes of simulation. The group 6 will be withdrawn up to 80% because if we continue withdrawing it will drag the group 7 and I don't want to touch the group 7 because it forms it's a part of this natural boundary of rods that limit the inner hexagon that we created the inner core inside the core Now the periods are around 60, much safer than <laughs> 4 seconds. <laughs> that was crazy. But I know what I'm doing, so it's okay. Okay, we're close to 80% in group 6, and the power is 17. 80. Now I will go to group, group 10. We see that it is totally located inside this hexagon and probably will make these corners of the hexagon go red because I guess this is the only reason why they are blue, this rod blocking neutrons going to them. And we see neutron generation 20% of nominal. Period 60 seconds. Simulation time, 6 minutes. And if you watch my previous video, the one of about generating weapon-grade plutonium, you may realize that after publishing this video, that video is just stupid, because <laughs> this is more relevant to the purpose of that video than that one. Just isolating one corner was looking at what can be done, just creating an inner hexagon core. That was totally useless. So that it's this is very significant concerning that subject. I will not talk about that now. Okay, 40% withdrawal of group 10 and 40% of nominal neutron production. Where that period 60 seconds while withdrawing rods. And we see this corner of the hexagon turning light green, shiny green, I guess yellow comes next. We have half of the nominal neutron production. I may switch to group 4 because when you reach to the limit of a 
group withdrawal, their activity increases less and less. So I will leave this at 80% and go to group, sorry, not for group 5 and continue withdrawing group 5. Indeed, we see a faster increase, we see the period going down with this switching from group 10 to group 5 because we're at 50%. So it's a higher reactivity slot or length of group 5. I'm just afraid we will not be able to reach 100%. because we are already at 74% of group 5 and we only have 20% remaining of group 10. But we may still withdraw a bit group 6, even if this means dragging a bit group 7, just for the purpose of reaching nominal power. What happens? What happens is a scrum? I don't know why. Why? Why do we have a scrum? P1 low 150 and N high on 75. Oh no. I should have disconnected this security too late. Okay, I take note. <laughs> maybe we'll try again, but I'm not sure. So maybe we'll just publish this video like this because you saw that I was going to reach nominal and I forgot to to connect this security overlay but I'm not sure it's meaningful to do if we need so many securities because we are really running this in a really unsafe configuration so okay PT we're very close but the pressure in the primary was too low which means we are too close to boiling condition in some roads and mostly because in this configuration we have a much higher power in this inner hexagon this is this is something that we should take into account so yeah shame see you in the next video bye